Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to another review. And since the Royal Rumble is next Saturday, why not review some classic uh, Royal Rumble shows? Starting off with WWF Royal Rumble 1998, which took place on January 18th, 1998, from San Jose, California, at the San Jose Arena, which that arena is now called the SAP Center. It had 18,542 in attendance and a pay-per-view buy rate of 300,000. This was the 11th annual Royal Rumble. And I thought it was a very enjoyable uh, show. It was a good show. It was the first uh, Royal Rumble of the Attitude Era. And the card was uh, pretty uh, decent. We had... Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker in a casket match where the WWF Championship was on the line. We had uh, The Rock versus Ken Shamrock for the WWF Intercontinental Championship, which The Rock was the champ at the time. And uh, Shawn Michaels, I forgot to mention at that time, was the WWF champion. We also had The Legion of Doom. This was Animal and Hawk versus the New Age Outlaws, Billy Gunn, and Road Dogg, who were the tag team champions at the time. This was the tag team match for the tag team championship. And we also had Vader versus uh, the artist formerly known as Goldust. This was when Goldust was a heel, and he was accompanied by Luna Vachon. And we had a six-man tag, which was a uh, mini match. It was Max Mini. Mosaic and Nova versus uh, Batalon, El Torito, and Tarantula. And you had Sonny as the special guest referee. And of course, you had the 30-man Royal Rumble, where the winner will get to go to WrestleMania 14 and face off for the WWF Championship. But overall, Royal Rumble 1998, very uh, good show it was. But let's jump right into the review. So, Royal Rumble 1998 opened up. We had some uh, pyro going off. We were joined by Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross on commentary. The best uh, commentary team in uh, WWF at that time, you know, Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross. They were the voices of my childhood. So, we also saw Mike Tyson. Iron Mike Tyson was in attendance. He was sitting in a private box. The crowd ended up booing him. And the next night on Monday Night Raw set off uh, that famous uh, segment with Mike Tyson and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So the first match to kick off Royal Rumble 1998 was Vader versus the artist formerly known as Goldust. So this was when Goldust was a heel. He was accompanied by Luna Vachon. Goldust came out. He was wearing a uh, green wig. His makeup was uh, green and uh, black. So it was ridiculous what he was wearing. He was wearing a purple-green attire. So they end up showing highlights at that time of when uh, Goldust ended up dumping his uh, wife, uh, Marlena. And then three weeks before the Royal Rumble on Monday Night Raw, Goldust was shown dressed as a baby, you know, baby New Year. That was a segment where Stone Cold Steve Austin came out and he brought down the porta potty and he ended up uh, stuffing Goldust in there, tipping over the porta potty. So we saw all that. And then Vader ended up coming out. Vader was the baby face here. And he got a good pop from the crowd there in San Jose. To which Vader, may he uh, rest in peace. So the star of the match, Vader ended up running over Goldust with a run and splash. Goldust ended up bailing out to the floor. Vader sent Goldust into the ring steps. So the fans were behind Vader here. So they went back to the ring. Vader ended up hitting a back body drop to Goldust. 
Luna got involved and ended up grabbing Vader's foot. Goldust then ended up hitting a clothesline to knock Vader down. Vader ended up missing a splash, so Goldust took control of the match. He ended up hitting another clothesline to uh, Vader. Goldust then ended up hitting an elbow drop off the middle ropes. So Vader ended up going out to the floor. Goldust followed up by whipping Vader into the ring steps. So Luna got involved again, and she ended up getting some cheap shots on Vader out on the floor. Goldust then ended up punching Vader against the turnbuckle. And then, of course, uh, Goldust, because he did the, uh, the 10 punches, Goldust ended up doing his famous... And then he ended up kissing Vader. And then Vader came back and delivered a huge run in Lariat, which knocked Goldust down. Goldust ended up trying to do a body slam to Vader, but of course that ended up failing, not doing nothing to Vader. So Vader ended up hitting Goldust with a suplex. Vader then ended up hitting a splash onto Goldust, and he followed up with a clothesline. Vader ended up going to the middle ropes for the Vader bomb, to which Luna distracted the referee. And that led to Goldust punching Vader, giving Vader a low blow, and knocked him down. Vader ended up avoiding a charge from Goldust. And then Vader came back and delivered a clothesline to Goldust. Vader ended up stopping a sunset flip attempt by splashing Goldust. So Vader went to a turnbuckle, and he was going to do the Vader bomb. Luna jumped on Vader's back. And that led to Vader jumping off the ropes and landing the Vader bomb on Goldust. And Luna Vachon ended up going face first down to the mat because she was still on uh, Vader's back when he delivered the, uh, the Vader bomb. So Vader ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Vader ended up winning the match. I thought this was a very fun match. Was it great? No. But I got some enjoyment out of it. And Vader was the right guy to win. It was also nice to see that the crowd was behind Vader. You know, like I said, you know, Vader, may he rest in peace. He was very good in the ring, whether he was a babyface or a heel. And this was a weird time for uh, Goldust, you know, being a heel because he was coming out there, you know, dressing very weirdly. You know, what we saw uh, here, he comes out wearing a purple green attire which looked ridiculous, and he had the green wig, and when he took it off, his hair was blue. You know, and then him doing the uh, the Baby New Year three weeks before on uh, Monday Night Raw. It was a very weird time for, uh, you know, Dustin Rhodes when he was gold dust. But overall, like I said, this was a very fun match. And then we saw Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin arrived into the arena with his pickup truck. Michael Cole, a very young uh, Michael Cole, was there trying to uh, interview him. Austin ended up telling Michael Cole to park his pickup truck and to not scratch it. So Austin then walked into the arena. And then we saw the Godwins, Phineas and Henry. They showed up asking Michael Cole where Austin went. So pretty much... Basically, Austin was the favorite to win the Rumble, so everybody, every wrestler was looking for Austin to try to take him out of the Rumble, because before the Rumble, Austin ended up attacking the guys, giving them stunners. So, pretty much that was basically that. And then we had the uh, minis match. This was a six-man minis match. This was uh, Max Mini, Mosaic, and Nova versus Batalon, El Torito, and Tarantula. And Sunny, the woman who can't stay out of trouble, made her entrance. She was the special guest referee for the match. This is not, of course, the El, Tor the El Torito that was a part of Los Matadores, you know, the Colognes. You know, it wasn't that El Torito. But I did not care for this minis match. This was the weakest match on the card. And looking at it, I'm like, did this deserve to be on the Royal Rumble 1998 card? This could have been easily a dark match. 
So Nova and Tarantula started off. Nova delivered a head scissors on Tarantula, and he up hit the mat. Nova delivered a drop kick that sent Tarantula out of the ring. Max Mini did a did three arm drags that sent Batalon out of the ring. I may be pronouncing uh, the name wrong, but Batalion. I don't know how you pronounce it though. But he was out of the ring, and of course uh, El Torito delivered a press slam on Mosaic, which followed by El Torito launching Mosaic in the air. Mosaic delivered an arm drag that sent El Torito out of the ring. Tarantula then delivered a running clothesline on Mosaic. Nova delivered a drop kick on Batalon to send him out of the ring. Nova delivered a hip toss on El Torito, and then he did some arm drags. And then Mike Tyson, they showed Mike Tyson in the sky box. He was laughing about it. I mean, what was there to laugh about in this match? So Mosaic uh, delivered a head scissors on Batalon three times, which sent him out of the ring. We had uh, Max Mini end up tagging in, leading to Tarantula, kicking him down. Tarantula delivered a clothesline on uh, Max Mini. So we then had uh, Tarantula end up going up to the apron. And then up on top, he delivered a head scissors to uh, Max Mini. So, according to JR on commentary, it was known that Max Mini was 87 pounds. So, that's, you know, pretty crazy at that at that weight, you know, 87 pounds. So, you had uh, Sonny, who was a special guest referee. She ended up picking up uh, Max Mini, help him kick uh, the other guys down. Mosaic delivered an arm drag followed by a dive onto Batalon on the floor. And then at the end of the match, El Torito ended up missing a splash on Max Mini. He went up to the top. Max Mini delivered a head scissor takeover arm drag. And he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Max Mini, Mosaic, and Nova ended up winning the match. Did not care for this match. I thought this was the weakest match on the card. This was just. A filler match, in my opinion. This could have been a dark match. This did not deserve to be on the card. But that's just my opinion. And then we saw the Nation of Domination. Farouk, Kamal Mustafa, which later on, of course, he would be the godfather. You know, the Ho Train. And then D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. So Nation of Domination was backstage. They were outside Austin's dressing room. So they went into Austin's dressing room, and he wasn't inside. There was a uh, Austin 316 foam middle finger on a chair. So pretty much Austin was telling them to fuck off. And pretty much that was that. But I thought that was uh, very funny, you know, seeing those, you know, seeing the old school Austin 316 uh Foam middle finger, which that's classic old school uh, WWF there. You know, brings me back to my childhood. And then we went back to the arena and we saw Mike Tyson again in the skybox. And Vince and Shane McMahon were now sitting with Mike Tyson. And then I went to Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross, and a fan behind them had a uh, Hey Tyson, Bite Me sign. Because this was after when Mike Tyson ended up biting Evander Hoyfield's ear, which led to Mike Tyson getting suspended from uh, boxing. So and then we saw highlights of Ken Shamrock, where he was beating uh, members of the Nation of Domination for three straight weeks. And then on the Monday Night Raw, prior to the Raw Rumble, Mark Henry ended up turned heel, joining the Nation of Domination. And he turned heel on Shamrock. And pretty much that was what we saw. So then The Rock, we saw The Rock. He was being interviewed by Michael Cole. The Rock was, of course, part of the Nation of Domination. 
He was still known as Rocky Maivia, and he was Intercontinental Champion. He was the heel. So Rock ended up giving a shout out to the then president, President Bill Clinton, and his problems with Paula Jones, saying, when you lay down with a dog, you're going to get fleas. And he ended up saying to cover it, Willie. So Rock ended up telling Ken Shamrock that he was going to beat him one-on-one. But don't worry, because someone will carry Shamrock out of the building. So that was what uh, The Rock had to say. So then we had the match, The Rock versus Ken Shamrock for the Intercontinental Championship. The Rock was the first one to come out. And Rock was not joined by any members of the Nation of Domination. So we got a chance of Rocky Sucks uh, to uh, The Rock. So that pissed off The Rock to which he got on the mic. And he ended up saying to the crowd, Oh, you may chant Rocky Sucks, but the fact that I'm the Intercontinental Champion and I'm the best damn Intercontinental Champion there ever was. So then Ken Shamrock ended up making his way out. Ken Shamrock, you know, good uh, talent. You know, I actually got to meet uh, Ken Shamrock, very nice guy. And here he got a good pop from the crowd. So the match uh, got underway. And the match started off slow because Ken Shamrock ended up getting a punch in. The Rock ended up backing away. Rock connected with some punches to Shamrock. Shamrock ended up coming back with a kick to The Rock, which he followed up with a punch, which led The Rock going over the top, out to the floor. Rock got back into the ring, and he took control of the match. He delivered a clothesline to Shamrock. Shamrock ended up coming back, delivered some uh, clotheslines to The Rock. But Shamrock ended up going for a Hercarana. The Rock ended up countering Shamrock by sending him into the top rope. Rock ended up going for the cover, to which Shamrock kicked out too. So it was a good count, good counter there. Rock stomped on Shamrock against the turnbuckle. Shamrock came back, delivered a cross body block to The Rock, which he followed up with a fisherman suplex, to which Rock kicked out at two. Rock came back, delivered a clothesline to Shamrock. So they end up going out of the ring. Rock ended up sending Shamrock into the ring steps, and then he sent Shamrock back into the ring. Shamrock came back, delivered some punches to The Rock. Rock countered a clothesline attempt with a DDT, which Rock ended up doing a lot of times uh, in his career. Rock ended up slapping on a chin lock to ground Ken Shamrock. Rock ended up trying to do another DDT, but Shamrock countered it into an overhead suplex. So Shamrock ended up decking the Rock with a hard punch to his face. Shamrock then sent Rock into the ropes, followed up by a power slam. So Shamrock sent Rock into the turnbuckle, which he followed by her Karana, which was impressive. It was a great uh, her Karana. And then Kyle Mustafa and D'Lo Brown end up coming down to the ring. Shamrock punched both Kama and D'Lo Brown, and D'Lo's foot was caught in the ropes. And while that was all happening, Rock pulled out some brass knucks out of his tights. And the ref was busy trying to get D'Lo Brown's uh, foot out of the ropes. So Rock punched Shamrock with the brass knucks. Rock ended up putting the brass knucks in Shamrock's tights. So Rock ended up going for the cover. The referee ended up counting. And Shamrock kicked out, which got a big pop from the crowd. So then Shamrock got back up. He delivered the belly belly suplex on the Rock which Shamrock ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Shamrock supposedly won the match. So he w- he won the Intercontinental Championship. But, but, The Rock ended up telling Mike Chioda, who was the referee of the match, that Shamrock had brass knucks in his tights. So Mike Chioda went over to Ken Shamrock, who was still uh, celebrating... So Mike Chioda checked Shamrock's tights 
Shamrock pulled out the brass knucks, and Shamrock ended up saying to Mike Chioda, oh, I didn't do it. So Mike Chioda reversed the decision, and the match ended the disqualification. The Intercontinental Championship stays on The Rock. So The Rock won the match by disqualification, and post-match, Shamrock grabbed Mike Chioda, gave him a belly-to-belly -belly suplex, which got a pop from the crowd. Shamrock locked in the ankle lock on Chioda, who was immediately tapping out. So Shamrock was pissed off at that. So Shamrock got screwed by The Rock. But overall, this was a good match, and it kept the feud going uh, with Rock and Shamrock. It was another match that was going to go into WrestleMania 14. So, but overall, very good match. So then we saw the Boequas. They were shown backstage. They were looking for Austin. So they went into a room and they ended up attacking a guy, which they thought was Austin. But it was one of the uh, DOA guys, and that led to a brawl between the Bariquas and the DOA, you know, the Disciples of Apocalypse. So pretty much that was that. And then we saw a video package which set up the New Age Outlaws uh, defending the uh, Tag Team Championship against the Legion of Doom, Animal, and Hawk. Late Great Hawk. So the video package put over uh, Legion of Doom as legends. So pretty much it showed how uh, they end up shaving uh, Hawk's head. And then we had the New Age Outlaws. Road Dog and Billy Gunn. They end up coming out. They were wearing Brett Favre's uh, Green, Bay, Green Bay Packers jersey to piss off the fans because, you know, the Packers that year eliminated the 49ers from the playoffs. So pretty much that was that. And then the Legion of Doom were interviewed by Michael Cole backstage. And Michael Cole ended up saying that Animal had a back injury and that the doctors didn't want him to compete. So Animal ended up telling Michael Cole that he wasn't going to miss this. He kept saying that the New Age Outlaws will get their butts kicked. So, Hawk ended up doing his well routine, and then he ended up with the what a rush. And then the Legion of Doom made their way out. Good ovation from uh, them. So the match got on the way. New Age Outlaws, Billy Gunn and Road Dog versus the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal for the WWF Tag Team titles. Of course, the New Age Outlaws were the champs. So it started out with Animal hitting a power bomb on Road Dog, and Billy Gunn ended up making the save because Animal ended up going for the pin on Road Dog. So both Billy Gunn and Road Dog they end up trying to walk away. LOD brought them back into the ring. Hawk delivered a run shoulder block on Road Dog. And he delivered a corner clothesline and a boot to Road Dog's face. Animal tagged in. He delivered a back elbow to Road Dog, which he followed up with a choke. And Road Dog was bleeding from his mouth. I don't know if he lost a tooth or uh, he bit his tongue bad. But Hawk ended up tagging in with a neck breaker. Road Dog came back with an eye poke to Hawk. Billy Gunn then tagged in. Hawk took uh, Billy Gunn down with a loot desk press, followed up by some punches. Animal came in and he delivered a belly belly suplex to Billy Gunn. Hawk tripped up Billy Gunn into a submission, which had Animal end up coming back in. Road Dog tripped Animal and Billy Gunn ended up punching Animal, Animal out of the ring, to which he ended up whipping Animal into the ring steps on the outside. Hawk ended up hitting both the New Age Outlaws with a double clothesline, even though, you know, Animal was the legal man. So Hawk ended up missing a corner charge. 
He hit the ring post with his shoulder, which led to him bumping out to the floor. So then Road Dog got handcuffs. Road Dog ended up cuffing Hawk to the ring post that was connected to the bottom turnbuckle. So then they went after Animal, who came back with a double clothesline. Animal delivered a jump and shoulder tackle onto Billy Gunn, and he ended up going for the cover, to which Billy Gunn kicked out too. Billy Gunn delivered an eye poke to Animal, and Billy Gunn was up top, and Animal ended up turning that into a power slam. Road Dog hit Animal in the back with a chair, and that led to the match being the disqualification. So the Legion of Doom won the match by disqualification, but Billy Gunn and Road Dog end up remaining the tag team champions. So, but post match, Road Dog end up hitting Animal in the back with uh, chair shots. Hawk, who was still handcuffed to uh, the ring post, was helpless at ringside. And Billy Gunn ended up hitting a splash off the middle ropes onto the back of Animal. Hawk ended up breaking the handcuffs and he went to the ring. He ended up hitting both Billy Gunn and Road Dog in the head with some chair shots. So pretty much that was basically that. So the rivalry between the Legion of Doom and the New Age Outlaws continued. So but overall. I thought this was an okay match. So then we saw Stone Cold's pickup truck. It was given away. So there was a contest and the winner would get to have Stone Cold's uh, pickup truck. And it was a woman from Nashville, Tennessee that they gave uh, the truck away to. So back in the day, WWE used to do that. So, but not all the time. I remember at a SummerSlam '97, they were giving away a uh, million dollars. And then we saw a video package aired about Stone Cold Steve Austin being the marked man in the Royal Rumble. And there was highlights of Austin hitting the stunner to multiple guys every single week on Monday Night Raw. So then we went to the 30-man Raw Rumble match. Howard Finkel, may he rest in peace, he announced the rules for the Raw Rumble. So it said that the intervals of entrance are two minutes each. And then the... Uh, the winner will get to have a match at WrestleMania 14 with a WWF championship will be on the line. So we had the first entry into the Rumble was Cactus Jack. You know, it was Mick Foley. And of course, this Royal Rumble was famous for the three faces of Foley because we had Cactus Jack, Mankind, and Do Love. So Cactus Jack entered at number one. And then Chainsaw Charlie who was Terry Funk, entered at number two. So we had, you know, Terry Funk as Chainsaw Charlie came out with the uh, the chainsaw. He had some pantyhose on his head. And Cactus ended up throwing chairs into the ring. And Chainsaw Charlie ended up hitting him in the back with some chair shots. They were doing some uh, chair shot spots. So Chainsaw Charlie end up begging uh, Cactus Jack for a chair shot. And Cactus delivered a chair shot to Chainsaw Charlie's head, you know, which you won't see that nowadays because, you know, concussions. So Cactus ended up giving uh, Chainsaw Charlie a chair. He delivered two shots to the head. So then at number three, Tom Brandy ended up coming out. So he was the number three into the Rumble match. And Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack end up dumping him out in about, like, what, 10 seconds? So then Cactus Jack, Chainsaw Charlie started brawling some more. Cactus Jack ended up setting up some seated chairs. And he suplexed Chainsaw Charlie onto the two folding chairs. 
So they were both baby faces here. Both Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie were the baby faces. So later on in the year, they went on to be in uh, tag team champs. So then The Rock came out at number four. So The Rock came out. He was working on uh, Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack. And number five, we had Mosh, who was part of the Headbangers. He ended up coming out. Mosh, DDT, Chainsaw Charlie, who stumbled all over the place. So Chainsaw Charlie ended up hitting a moonsault, which barely got Mosh. So then at number six, Phineas Godwin ended up coming out. And things started to slow down there a bit. And then at number seven, Eight Ball came out. Eight Ball was a part of the Disciples of Apocalypse. And this was at the time when, you know, WWF was having these, uh, was crazy having all these stables. So then at number eight, we had JBL. We had uh, Bradshaw when he was known as Blackjack Bradshaw. And he wasn't, this was before the APA here. So he ended up coming out. Then at number nine, it was Owen Hart. But Owen Hart got taken out by Jeff Jarrett, which Jeff Jarrett was the NWA North American champion at that time, and he was accompanied by Jim Cornette. You know, both the guys were representing the NWA. So Jeff Jarrett ended up beating up Owen Hart in the aisle. Owen Hart was the baby face. And Owen Hart... Did not get into the ring for the Rumble because he was taken out by Jeff Jarrett. So Steve Blackman ended up coming out at number 10. And pretty much uh, at number 11, we had D'Lo Brown coming out. D'Lo Brown and The Rock were working on Bradshaw. And they started fighting with each other. And then at number 12... Kurgan came out. Kurgan was this big guy who was 7 feet, 350 pounds. So Kurgan ended up uh, coming in there. And Kurgan would end up dumping Mosh out of the match. Steve Blackman ended up going for a kick. And that missed Kurgan. Kurgan started pounding Blackman in the corner. And then at number 13, Mark Merrow made his way out. He was accompanied by Sable. Of course, Sable would become very popular within the next year. And we had uh, number 14, uh, Ken Shamrock ended up coming out. And of course, The Rock was still in there. They would go at it again in the Rumble, like, you know, when they did later on in the night. So... This feud, of course, would continue into WrestleMania 14 with uh, The Rock and Ken Shamrock. So Ken Shamrock ended up getting Kurgan down. And then we had six or seven guys gang up. And they eliminated this 7-foot, 350-pound uh, monster as Kurgan. So Kurgan was pissed. He was having a fit that he got eliminated. So at number 15, we had Thrasher, who was part of the Headbangers. He ended up coming out. He got a decent-sized pop from the crowd. The Rock and D'Lo Brown, we saw they kept fighting each other. So at number 16, Mankind came out. So Mankind came out. He eliminated Chainsaw Charlie. Then at number 17, uh, Goldust, the artist formerly known as Goldust, came out. He was now wearing this silver outfit and he had his blue hair and he painted his face uh, red here so he had he was wearing some orange shoes so he was in there so Goldust eliminated Mankind with a hip toss and then number 18 Jeff Jarrett came out of course the NWA North American champion so as Jeff Jarrett made his way into the ring Owen Hart came sprinting into the ring. Owen Hart went right after Jeff Jarrett. 
And he got back at Jeff Jarrett for attacking him earlier. So we had Owen Hart end up pin a heel kick on Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett ended up trying to throw uh, Owen Hart out of the ring to eliminate him, but Owen ended up hanging on. Jeff Jarrett ended up doing his strut. And then Owen threw Jeff Jarrett out of the ring, eliminated him. So at number 19, the Honky Tonk Man ended up coming out. So as Honky Tonk Man was making his way out, Triple H and China ended up coming out. Triple H was on crutches. He was at that time the European champion. So he starts yelling at Owen Hart. We had The Rock eliminate Ken Shamrock. So Owen started yelling at Triple H in China. China ended up going to hit Owen with a crutch. Owen caught the crutch. Triple H was on the ring apron. And Triple H ended up hitting Owen with the crutch. And he eliminated Owen. So that was pretty much that with Owen Hart getting eliminated. You know, Owen Hart, you know, great talent. May he rest in peace. And I like how uh, JR, he was selling that spot. He was like, what an arrogant ass is Helmsley. So then we had Owen Hart. He got back up. He ran to the back. And just when he uh, got behind the curtain, he ended up slipping. And you hear uh, Jerry Lawler go, ha Owen Hart fell. <laughs> and then Ahmed Johnson came out at number 20. So... Ahmed Johnson, you know, he had some injuries, slowing him down in his career. And they have shown a replay of Ken Shamrock being eliminated because they end up missing that. So it was caused by The Rock. The Rock low blowed Ken Shamrock, and that led to him eliminate Ken Shamrock. So then, number 21, it was Mark Henry, who was the new member of the Nation of Domination. So, at number 22, it was supposed to be Skull from the DOA. But earlier, he was attacked by uh, the Bariquas. Because, I guess that was the guy that the Bariquas ended up attacking with the bald head when they thought that it was Austin. Uh, you also had Mark Henry and Ahmed Johnson going at it there. And Mark Henry threw some powder in Ahmed Johnson's eyes. So Ahmed Johnson ended up starting brawling with uh, Phineas uh, Goblin on the floor. And we had at number 23, Kama Mustafa of the Nation of Domination came out. So he was in there. And a lot of the, you know, JR and Jerry Lawler. End up saying that, oh, Austin might have been number 22, but he might have been eliminated due to the bounty that was placed on him. So at number 24, Stone Cold Steve Austin came out. He got the biggest pop of the night. Everyone in the ring stopped, and they were waiting for Austin to come out of the entranceway. But Austin didn't come out of the entrance. Austin came through the crowd and Austin ended up eliminating Mark Marrow. And then he eliminated 8-Ball. Austin ended up choking D'Lo with his jacket. And when Austin came into the Rumble, this changed the match right here. So, at number 25, Henry Godwin ended up coming out. And they ended up mentioning that Bradshaw, you know, Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross, ended up mentioning that Bradshaw was in the Rumble, for 36 minutes. So at number 26, Savio Vega and the Bariquas end up coming out. Savio Vega and his guys end up coming into the ring and they attacked Austin. So JR on commentary end up talking about Bradshaw, calling him a big young stud. So at number 27, Farouk was in the Rumble. Farouk went right after The Rock, even though they were still uh, allies. Austin and The Rock started fighting on the floor. 
because they end up going through the ropes. Rock end up whipping Austin into the ring steps. And Rock end up dropping Austin jaw first onto the railing. So, and number 28, Do Love end up coming out. Do Love eliminated Bradshaw. Austin end up whipping Goldust into the ring steps. End up decking him with a clothesline. Rock end up hitting the people's elbow on D'Lo. And then at number 29, Chains of the DOA end up coming into the match. So then at number 30, the last spot was Vader. Vader entered at number 30, and Vader ended up throwing out the Honky Tonk Man. Austin had thrown out uh, Thrasher and Kamu Mustafa. Austin had fighting Savio Vega, ended up throwing him out too. Goldust clotheslined Vader out of the match. Do Love eliminated Henry Godwin. Chain Stand eliminated Goldust, which led us to six guys in the ring. So Austin ended up eliminated Chains of the DOA. Fruit tried to eliminate Mark Henry, but Mark Henry ended up hanging on. So Fruit knocked Mark Henry out in a spot. So, Mark Henry ended up getting eliminated. So, the final four were Austin, Do Love, Farouk, and The Rock. So, we had Do Love end up hitting his uh, sweet shin music on The Rock and then delivered a DDT. Austin ended up going after Do Love. Do Love ended up coming back with the mandible claw. Austin ended up kicking Do Love. In balls, Farouk ended up clotheslining uh, Do Love out. Farouk then went after Austin, to which Farouk came close to eliminate Austin. Rock ended up sitting down in the corner. Rock was waiting for a spot as he ended up dumping Farouk out of the ring. So then it was down to Austin and Rock. So Austin ended up throwing Rock over the top rope. Rock hanged on. So Austin ended up delivering the stunner to The Rock, and he sold it by popping back up to his feet. Austin ended up throwing uh, Rock out of the ring. So there you go. Austin ended up winning the 1998 Royal Rumble. But I thought this was a very entertaining Rumble. Of course, Austin went on to WrestleMania 14 to face Shawn Michaels for the WWF Championship with Mike Tyson as the special guest referee. And of course, at the end of the match, that led to Tyson knocking out uh, Shawn Michaels. You know, Austin winning the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 14. And then we had uh, post-match. Steve Austin celebrated the win. Mike Tyson was excited in his skybox and Austin got a big ovation and of course the next night it would be uh, Tyson and Austin in that famous segment so Austin had uh, seven eliminations he had the most eliminations so then Mike Tyson was interviewed by Michael Cole Mike Tyson who called Stone Cold Cold Stone. He ended up saying that Cold Stone was his man, and he won. So he was happy about it. Mike Tyson had talked about how he was a fan of The Undertaker for many years, and that he liked Shawn Michaels, and he was looking forward to uh, the match. <laughs> so Mike Tyson botching Stone Cold's name, calling him Cold Stone. That was, you know, memorable. So people made fun of Mike Tyson for that. So then we saw a video package about uh, Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker's rivalry between uh, them both. And it started out at SummerSlam 97, which led to uh, DX being formed with Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and China. And the Undertaker was determined to put an end to Shawn Michaels' uh, title reign. And that led to the match that they had at In Your House Bad Blood, which was the very first Hell in a Cell match, which was 
crazy. It was an amazing match, which, of course, uh, that was the debut of Kane. Kane ended up costing The Undertaker uh, the match at Bad Blood. So they ended up setting up a casket match for the Royal Rumble. So Undertaker was talking about his history in casket matches. So, and then we had uh, the match. Shawn Michaels ended up entering first. Of course, he was the WWF champion. He was accompanied by Triple H and China. So the Undertaker ended up coming out. The Undertaker got a huge pop from the crowd. And then the match got on the way. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Casket match for the WWF Championship. Very good match this was. So a casket was placed beside the ring. Of course, how a casket match works, you have to put your opponent in the casket, shut the lid. Of course, we all know how casket matches work. So this was the main event. And the match started off with Shawn Michaels. He ended up throwing some punches at Undertaker. Taker came back and he delivered a choke on Michaels. Shawn Michaels ended up jumping into Taker's arms and into a choke. Undertaker ended up picking up Shawn Michaels for a press slam. And Shawn Michaels ended up breaking free of that. So Shawn Michaels ended up charging. Taker ended up giving him a back body drop over the top. Shawn Michaels' lower back ended up hitting the edge of the casket, which uh, that shortened Shawn Michaels' career. Because after that uh, spot, he was experiencing severe back pains and that he didn't wrestle again until WrestleMania 14. So that was, of course, two months later. So pretty much after WrestleMania 14, uh, it took four years until Shawn Michaels could have wrestled again. I mean, that spot there did some serious back pain to uh, Shawn Michaels. So, Taker was in control of the match. He ended up slamming Shawn Michaels on the floor, kicked Shawn Michaels in the cat into the casket. Shawn Michaels quickly got out of there. So both guys went back to the ring. Taker ended up decking Shawn Michaels with a punch. So Taker ended up uh, going old school, you know, his rope walk, which he followed up with a punch to Shawn Michaels' shoulder. Shawn Michaels ended up bumping across the ring. Taker whipped. Michaels into the turnbuckle, leading to uh, Michaels bumping over the top out to the floor. Michaels then ended up hitting a neck breaker using the top rope for assist. He jumped off the top and Taker counted that into a power slam. Taker ended up putting uh, Shawn Michaels in the casket. Shawn Michaels uh, prevented the lid from being closed and he ended up throwing powder in Taker's face. So what was really cool was that they showed a cam in the casket. And it showed Shawn Michaels throwing the powder in Undertaker's eyes. So Taker ended up trying to come back with a choke slam. Michaels fought Taker off, ended up hitting a moonsault, press off the top. And Michaels delivered a clothesline over the top. Taker ended up pulling him out of the ring. And he ended up sending Shawn Michaels into the security railing at ringside. Which back then, you know, they didn't have like the uh, the big barricades, you know, like what we see now. So Shawn Michaels ended up coming back. He ended up whipping Taker knee first into the ring steps, and that was a brutal bump there. You know, Taker uh, taking that uh, knee bump into the ring steps. So Shawn Michaels hit Taker in the back with the ring steps uh, two times. He ended up hitting a pile driver on the bottom half of the ring steps uh, to Taker. So Triple H went over to uh, Undertaker, started beating him up with his crutch. Triple H ended up hitting Taker in the back with a crutch. Michaels hit Taker in the back with a chair. And we had uh, them go back into the ring. Michaels delivered a running back elbow to Undertaker. Michaels rolled Undertaker into the casket. Taker came back with some punches. Taker ended up punching uh, Triple H. So Michaels ended up in a swing and neck breaker. He ended up jumping on the back of Undertaker and he applied the sleeper hold. Taker then ended up in a belly to back suplex to Michaels. Shawn Michaels came back with a forearm. He ended up going up top and he had a lefty elbow drop off the top rope to Undertaker. Michaels was set up in the corner. 
and he connected with a sweet chin music to put Undertaker down. Shawn Michaels then rolled Undertaker into the casket, and he took forever to shut the lid because he ended up doing the crotch top to Undertaker, to which then Undertaker grabbed uh, Michaels in the groin. So Taker delivered a back body drop and a turnbuckle bump by Shawn Michaels. Taker ended up hitting the clothesline. Taker then delivered a boot to Michaels' face. And he was going for a run and clothesline, but Shawn Michaels moved out of the way. Taker went falling into the casket. Shawn Michaels went up top. And he ended up jumping off the top and hit a awesome elbow drop into the casket to The Undertaker. So both guys were in the casket. Earl Hebner ended up closing the lid of the casket. Michaels tried to crawl out of the casket. Taker ended up pulling him back in the casket. Taker ended up punching Michaels to knock him out of the casket. And they went back to the ring. Taker ended up pinning a huge choke slam in the center of the ring to Michaels. He picked up Michaels, stood on the ring apron. And Taker then ended up pinning a huge tombstone to Michaels into the casket. China sent the referee into the ring steps. And that's when we had the New Age Outlaws, the uh, Bariquas. They all end up attacking Taker. So it was six guys attacking uh, Undertaker. So the lights end up going out in the arena. Kane's music ended up hitting. And JR assumed that Kane was going out there to help his brother, the Undertaker. So Kane walked into the ring, he punched the Bariquas, and he ended up sending Billy Gunn and Road Dog out of the ring. He sent them all out, you know, the Bariquas and the New Age Outlaws out of the ring. So Kane was alone in the ring with The Undertaker. Triple H and China got Shawn Michaels out of the casket. Kane then T sent off the pyro. And then, all of a sudden, Kane punched Undertaker. So the fans were booing. Kane gave uh, Undertaker a choke slam off the apron into the casket. Shawn Michaels then shut the lid of the casket. And that led to Shawn Michaels win the match, retaining the WWF Championship. And then post-match, we had Kane and the late great Paul Bearer. They locked up the casket to prevent Undertaker from getting out of the casket. So they pushed the casket over to the entranceway. Kane bought out an axe and a case of gasoline. Kane took the axe, Kane took the axe to the casket and he was cutting some holes into the top of it. Kane broke through a hole and put an axe into the casket. Kane then poured gasoline all over the casket. Paul Bearer had a match in hand. He lit the matches and he gave the matches to Kane. Kane then tossed the matches onto the casket and the casket went on fire. And JR was like, the casket's on fire! The casket's on fire! The Undertaker is on fire! And pretty much that's basically how the show ended. But very good match. This was a big angle to set up Undertaker versus Kane at WrestleMania 14. And I watched this uh, show on the uh, Royal Rumble anthology. And they showed uh, exclusive clips uh, earlier, like after uh, The Rock and Ken Shamrock's match. Uh, we saw Ken Shamrock go into uh, The Rock's uh, dressing room, started beating him up. You know, it was a WWE home video, like exclusive. So we, so we saw that on the anthology. And then after uh, the show ended, it was another WWE home video like exclusive where we saw the WWE crew members end up extinguishing the fire on the casket. And so, you know, we had uh, Sergeant Slaughter, who was the commissioner at the time. And you had, uh, you know, Gerald Briscoe, Pat Patterson, out there. They were trying to break open uh, the casket. So when they finally broke open the casket, the Undertaker wasn't in there. So, and pretty much that was 
basically that. But overall, this was a good uh, Raw Rumble. Really uh, enjoyed it. You know, it was good to uh, go back and uh, watch, you know, the show. You know, it was the first uh, Raw Rumble of the Attitude Era. So, but makes me miss how, you know, WW, how the, 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 the WWE product used to be at this time. You know, you had a lot of fans in the crowd there with signs and like, you know, flashes going off from the cameras. You don't see any of that anymore. I mean, you like, you see like a few signs here and there nowadays, but not as much as what we saw back in the Attitude Era. So, but anyways, that's it for my review of Raw Rumble 1998. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, and until next video, I'll see you all later.